Okay, so you're sitting at your desk or your remote workspace, whatever you're doing now, and you have your laptop open, you have ArcGIS Pro open, you might be in a meeting or an email comes through, your boss needs to know answers from GIS data sets, right? So it could be, oh, can you tell me how many points intersect a particular polygon? What, whatever it is, right? There's, there's a few spatial questions that people ask of GIS people uh, or people who are au fait with ArcGIS Pro that we need to be able to get answers back off the system. Now, we talked about one way to do it in a previous video on symbology where you know I can symbolize based on particular values within my attribute table, and then I can pull out counts from that as well. But you know, it's okay for you know for for certain use cases. But there's certain times where you're going to need to actually either a filter the map or b select information from subsets of data. So we're going to cover that right now. Uh, the first place we're going to start off is definition queries because definition queries are quite easy to do, but quite powerful in the sense that they filter both the geometries and the attribute table of what you're looking at, right? So if you have quite a large data set like I have here, I have postcodes, right? So each point represents a postcode and then I have a ton more information in it, you know, like what building type, is it vacant, all that kind of stuff. We have information from it. From here, if I double left click my layer of what I want to filter, right? Filters in ArcGIS Pro are called definition queries. So if I double left click the layer that I want to filter, I go to definition queries. I'm going to say new definition query. I wouldn't even bother going down, you know, like add definition queries from files, cool enough. Like if we have a text file and we're, we're you know, um, familiar with SQL, but the, the mini series here we're focusing on brand new beginner to ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to assume you don't have any development experience or any SQL experience or any CAD experience, right? We're going to create a new definition query. So just click new definition query. And from here, it's very kind of uh, easy to set up, right? So I say where I select the field, field is the column. So I can say, oh, where vacant equals yes. And if I just hit apply, hit okay, it's gonna show me all the ones that say they're vacant at the moment, right? And if I right click, open my attribute table, I can see, oh, if, if, my, if my boss or my client or my stakeholder asked me, hey, how many, how many properties in this data set are tagged as vacant? I have a number now. I can say 1,605. If they come back to me and say, oh, that's great. But how many are vacant and their building use is equal to, and I have different options, right? Commercial, mixed use, residential, yeah? So if I say, they come back and say, oh, where vacant is equal to Y, which is yes, and building use is equal to commercial. Let's hit apply here and let's hit okay. It's going to tell me all the ones that are vacant and registered as commercial, at least for this data set, right? But the idea here is that I have now numbers that I can pull out and say, oh, yes, here's how many numbers there are. And then we'll get into analysis tools, how you might export this to an Excel file or, you know, create a layout of it. Um, but the idea remains the same, that I can come in and I could say, oh, there's 386 commercially vacant properties in this data set. And the idea is that you start building upon it. You can say where vacant is equal, yes, and or, right? So meets either criteria, or you want to say, uh, contains the text is not null for a lot of uh, you know values, particularly if they start off their life in CSVs or Excel files, they might have a lot of null values where you might not expect them to be. If you want to clear it up, you say, oh, where vacant is not null. And you can apply and, and go from there. But definition queries, very powerful thing. If you want to clear them, you just press the X. 
button, click yes, click OK, and it brings you back. Right, and we had 64,000 plus records in our attribute table there, you know, and definition queries, very handy way to be able to filter it out quite easily as well, right? So just double left click, definition query, new definition query, where, and then start working your way through your fields, through your filter criteria, yeah? The second thing I wanted to talk about here is selection tools. Now, you know, what, what's the difference between selections and definition query? Definition queries are actually filters. So they'll filter the geometries, they'll filter the attribute table to whatever you specify, right? In, in our case, we said, show me all the vacant buildings, right? Perfect. If I wanted to do the same thing, I could say, oh, select by attribute table and selection type. And I said, vacant is equal to, yes, the exact same query logic that I had set up. I just hit apply. As opposed to filtering out the map, it just highlights all the ones in turquoise. Now, if I open up my attribute table, I still have my 64,690 records within the data set, but I also then have my 1,605 in my selected records. And down the bottom left, I have all records or just the selected records here. So this is all the selected records that are vacant. So you can apply the same definition query. It just depends if you want to filter out the data set, definition queries. If I want to just select it, then it's a selection tool. And you can select by attributes. Or what we're going to do now is select by location. Anytime you select something, you can clear it. And I should point out, select by attributes is quite similar to setting up a definition query, but we have options. If we just want to rough and ready, select everything within a rectangle, I can do so. I can select everything within a polygon. And it's quite similar to my digitizing experience where I plot a point on a map, right? And plot along an area boundary. You have lasso as well, if I just want to circle everything real quick. And the idea is the same, open up the attribute table, still have access to my full amount of records, but then in selected, I have the subset that I've highlighted on the map, yeah? So you can do it manually, right? Or, or you can do it, yeah, manually is the, is the correct word there. So I can manually select things, I can select things by attribute, or the most powerful selection tool, in my opinion, is select by location. Because what that does, is it's a purely spatial thing. Like if you're talking about the benefits of GIS over any other information management software, this is it, you know, because select by location takes into account all your GIS data sets, all the geography of those data sets. And then you can start to identify and pull out answers based on location, based on spatial analysis. Yeah. So if I say select by location here, just to give you an example of it, and I put on my road network, and I put on my schools. And I want to say, okay, I want you to select air codes, relationship. I have loads of different options here, right? But the most commonly used ones are either intersect or within, right? There's a few other different options, right? Uh, within a polygon or within a distance, right? Um, and there's tons of different options here. We're just going to give you a couple of examples just to close out this video. But if I wanted to say air codes, right? So these are people's houses. And I wanted to say within a distance, selecting features are going to be schools. Search distance, say 100 meters. Or say, say 1,000 meters, right? And hit apply. That's going to tell me all the houses, right? All the residential points or the postcodes that are within a thousand meters of a school. And I right click my attribute table and I have out of my 64,000 plus records, 38 and a half thousand are within a thousand meters of a school. My search distance, I have different units as well. I can of course use kilometers if I wanted to, or 
I can change that again and say, actually, I just want to see who's within like 300 meters of a school. And again, selection type is new. It's going to filter it down again. And now I'm down to 9,688. Beautiful thing about select by location is that you can break it up into steps. Okay, so you can say selection type. And you can say add to current selection or remove from current selection. So really good for multi-criteria analysis that you want to like identify and filter down particular data sets or particular numbers. You can do that. You can invert the spatial relationship. And I want to say, well, actually tell me all the air codes that are outside, you know, uh, or, or greater than 300 meters of a school. You can do the exact same thing with the road network. You could say within a distance, 100 meters, say. But then check this out. In my input features, I can also say the schools. I can also say, show me all special areas of conservation. And I can use the road network as my criteria to define things. And once I have that sussed out, what I can do is go into each one of my attribute tables. And say, oh, there's one special area of conservation that's within 100 meters of a road. You can double left click that to zoom into it. You know, you obviously turn it on in your uh, table of contents. Schools, geocoded again, right click, attribute table. There's 16 schools within 100 meters of a road network. And you can, you know, uh, zoom to each one of these, you know, and check it out yourself and go from there. But select by location, very powerful. Uh, functionality within ArcGIS Pro for just getting answers, right? You know, like we're covering the basic steps, how to add data, how to color data, how to do all these things. But, you know, really where, where ArcGIS Pro starts coming to its own is when you start getting answers and insights from the actual data sets that you've loaded in. And again, you know, once I have a whole bunch of things selected, I have my email set, just X this out, clear, and it just clears any selection and I'm ready for the next step.